Hey guys, it's me, Christina. You can see it. Woohoo! You can see how red my hair is because of the sun. Um, I know I'm kind of obsessed with my hair. It's okay. Um, I'm reading in Ecclesiastes today, and I thought I haven't done a Bible tea in a long time. Um, and I think that. <laughs> Solomon's writings are very Bible tea worthy. And I want to, I love his straightforward approach. Like Solomon is so straightforward in everything that he says. It's because he's had everything. He's experienced everything that, that there is under the sun at that point. And he's just like, had it. Like there's nothing worth it. There's nothing new under the sun and so he, he's just sharing his wisdom with the world excuse me i need a drink of water my mouth is very dry okay <clears throat> and i'm rereading a little of what i read yesterday um okay let me see where was I at okay and I got to this part right here and I, I mean there's many many times especially in the Old Testament where I was like this is happening now like this is just it's another repeat of what's happening now and <clears throat> this could be a touchy subject but I don't care um let me move my sticky note a little bit uh, okay this is in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 8 if you see oppression of the poor and privation of justice and righteousness in the province, don't be astonished at the situation because official protects another official and higher officials protect them. The profit from the land is taken by all. The king is served by the field. And that just reminds me so much of kind of what's happening today not just in um politics but in lots of situations you know things today just are not fair markets are not fair um the the wages compared to the price of of living is not fair and it's because people aren't people aren't helping people anymore People are helping themselves. And I think it, it has to, it comes down to a, a heart thing. Um, because just like the Bible has said, man's hearts are waxing cold. And we don't look out for each other. Especially, you know, um, those who are higher up, who, who are in charge of things. They're not looking out for us. They're looking out for their for their pockets, for lining their pockets. Hi Pika. Let's say hi. Um and it's so sad. It's so sad. Not right now, Mama. Not right now. There is so much wisdom in this book. But Solomon has kind of like these rough edges. And he's not exactly politically correct, which I love. I love, there's not, some people don't like Ecclesiastes because of the way he talks, because of the things that are talked about, which are real, which are true, but they can be depressing. And we don't always want to hear about them, but it's the truth. One second, y'all. Okay. And the more I'm reading Ecclesiastes, the more I'm really loving it. Um, 
because I'm accepting it for what it is. It's Solomon's point of view. Solomon, who was most likely the most wisest man. Sorry, I always have sneezing fits when I'm doing videos. Um, besides Jesus, um, Solomon was probably the wisest man to walk the face of the earth. So he's making these observations, not out of, he's just fed up with life and he's had it and he's throwing a fit, but because he's seen everything there is to see under the sun. And he realizes that without God, all things are vanity. It's not like everything is vanity, everything is worthless, blah, blah, blah. What was me? He doesn't have Eeyore syndrome. But what he's saying is, without God in our life, everything else is worthless. Every earthly pursuit without God in it is useless. It's worthless. But once you add God into the mix, that's when it has a purpose. Everything has a purpose once you add God to the mix. It's not to say that we can't have hobbies. It's not to say that there's no use to anything because how depressing is that? But it's to say that without God, this world is useless because there's no fairness anymore. There is no people looking out for their people anymore. There is a price for a lot of people have their price and are willing to overstep their neighbor for a price. There's no more solidarity anymore. There's no more secrecy. There's no more um, neighborly love anymore. This world has become money hungry and driven by greed and it's disgusting but Solomon this is exactly what Solomon was seeing and experiencing how many years ago like thousands of years ago. well maybe not thousands hundreds at least hundreds and hundreds years ago Solomon who had all of this wisdom um and who's seen all these things and so finally he just tried all of these different things pleasures that man could get and he's like it's all futile it's all futile you know what will you do when you have all the money in the world what's going to drive you then um so i found this chapter to be really good really insightful and then down here in verse 19 we're still in five. Um, it says, Everyone to whom God has given riches and wealth, he also um, he has also allowed him to enjoy them, take his reward, and rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. Rejoicing in what our hands have created. There's some of us like me who can't physically work because of my health condition or my husband but there there are still things that we do there's still things that we labor at and enjoy the fruits of um and that's the gift of god that's the gift of god you know we we put our efforts in we we work hard um we love others we give when we can and and we we do the things that the Bible say and and we strive for the kingdom and then we enjoy the rewards that God gives us or sometimes he just gives us gifts because he loves us and that's our peace in this life we should um, especially as Christians I'm not saying we can't dream of course not I'm not saying you know, that we um, should be okay not having any type of life. 
we should all strive to do the thing that God created us to do. But we should never fill our life so much with getting, with working every hour we can work just so that we can get the extra money. Um, especially if you have what you need to sustain your family. Because how much time are we missing with our loved ones? How much time are we missing to just slow down and enjoy God? To just slow down and spend time with God in, in His Word, in prayer, in worship. Today, things are so fast because it's a me, me, me world. It's a microwave world. It's a fast food world. And we tend to expect everything to be like that fast paced, fast food type of thing. And then we're not getting the correct nourishment in all different areas of our life. Relationships are failing because we're not putting the time in them it takes to nurture our relationship. Friendships are failing because we're not putting the time in that's needed to to nourish uh the, the friendships we have things in our life that are failing because we expect that oh let me just put the intention in and things are just gonna happen because we're so used to but there's still things in this life that we have to we have to put our head to that we have to nourish and grow and we have to remember, as children of God, we are not expected to walk like the rest of this world. We're expected for, to produce the fruit of the Spirit, which one of them is patience, um, joy, kindness, gentleness, forbearance, love, truth, um, and so I just think it's important to take the time to to measure ourselves up to the to the Bible, you know. Am I am I pursuing all of these things that outside of providing what you what you need does it matter? Or am I correctly balancing my time? To pursue the things that God has me to pursue. We can get so caught up in, in climbing the ladder. That we can incorrectly balance our life. And that's not just in our job. But that could be in many different areas. So take time. Smell the roses. Take time to, to spend with God and be in his presence. Because that's what makes us great. It's not the success that we think we re reached on our own. But it's our character. It's, it's the character of who we are that makes us great. Because, because of God, not because of us. So... Um, I know I've skipped a little all over the place, um, but that's what that's what this was making me think of. This is this is the path that I was thinking along, <sighs> and I am really enjoying the Book of Ecclesiastes. I'm really enjoying it, getting a lot of good, wise counsel. A lot of people. Th probably read this and think that Solomon is whining and he's not he's being truthful that's another thing a lot of us today we don't want the truth we don't want to have our feelings hurt we don't want to be offended we live in this cocoon of of um, I'm not gonna get into that. <laughs> I'm not gonna get into that because I'm just thinking of, I'm thinking of this world and, uh, people throwing tantrums because somebody doesn't. 
Okay, see this. Recognize them in the manner that they want to be recognized. Like, we're grown folk throwing tantrums. Because people don't see us the way we think that they should see us. That's, that's the kindest way I can say it. And we've become so me-centered. It's, we, it's just become this me-centered world. And us as Christians have to be careful to be the light in the darkness. We cannot be scared to stand out and, and, to, and to love and to be a good neighbor, even when our neighbors aren't being good neighbors. And to be good to our family, even when our family isn't being good to us. We have to remember what the word says. We have to do what the word says to do and not what the world is doing. And sometimes we can get in our flesh and we want to treat people the way that they treat us. But that's not, that's not what God says to do. We have to be the light in this time, in this dark time. We have to be the light. We have to heal what needs healed in ourselves, so that we are not easily offended. So that we can go and seek God and, and pray and intercede and warfare and so that we can be the light in this darkness that maybe somebody might see our light and want to change from darkness to light. As I'm reading all of this and I'm looking at the ridiculous state our world is in, it is. I heard somebody say that our world has become a circus. And that's exactly what it has become. I look like a donkey, but if you don't call me a zebra, I'm going to get offended. Like, that's just, that's so selfish. That's so selfish. I'm not going to go into the other areas where it is definitely wrong, but it is selfish. It is selfish. Like, if you want to see yourself as a different way, okay, but other people's don't people don't know how are you who are you to get offended? Who are you to get offended? And this world has just become so dark and so cold and so me centered. And I see it reflected even as I'm I'm reading Ecclesiastes, I'm seeing it re re reflected. Girlfriend, excuse me. What this is not this is not a PlayStation. Mamacita, this is not a play area. Say hi. This is what happens when my girls come around. I lose my track of thought. I lose my train of thought. Anyways. As this world is getting darker, we have to make sure that we're getting lighter. And we're standing out. And we're being the light. That God called us to be in. Not to hide our light under the bushel. So that we don't stand out too much. Because it's getting to that place where. We're going to stand out like a sore thumb. People are going to have stuff to say. But if we truly love God we won't care. Because we're not of this world. How that all winds up into Ecclesiastes. I don't know. But just one thought led me to another. So. Take of it what you will, okay? <laughs> I'm going to go finish my study, and I have so much stuff coming up. I want to do a flip. I want to do a flip of this Bible. Um, it's not completed. There's a, yeah, I mean, there's a good bit done in here, but by no means is it completed. Um... But I want to switch. I want to switch Bibles. Um, not just because, not just the switch, but um, I've, I've studied a good chunk of this Bible. And I'll probably always come back to it until I finish it because I love it. But I'm taking a new approach to my Bible study. So I want to start afresh and anew. 
And when my new Bible gets here, I will show you. It's something I've never had before, but one that I've wanted for a long time. Anyways, um, I love, I love this Bible. I think this Bible will always be my heart, my love. Like I said a long time ago, it's, it's right up there with lovey. Where is lovey? I just found lovey. Of course, I can't find her now. She was right here. I figures I was going to show Lovey for those who don't know what Lovey is. I don't know where she's at. Oh, yes, I do. I do know where she's at. Hold on. She's right here. This is my mini Bible I painted the front. This is my mini Bible. This is Lovey. Um, a lot of her stuff has fallen out over the years. But this was my most loved Bible for so long. And I still have such a special place for this Bible in my heart. This Bible has gone to hospitals with me. It has gone many places um, with me. And I love this Bible so much. She sits right here on my shelf. But after this one, this one, this one is very special to me. I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed my time in it. Um, I'm not, not using it anymore because I don't like it. I love it so much. It's that... Um, I'm taking a brand new approach to the Bible. So I want something fresh to keep my notes. A new note set. But I will probably always come back. Come back to this love. And I definitely want to finish her. Um, I have so many. like. So what I did was. Because I was in different Bibles throughout the year. Because I couldn't figure out what I wanted. And listen, Miss Bang. Listen, 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 Pika Pika. Say hi, Pika. Say hi, Pika. This is Pika. She's getting so big. Um, oh, I was in so many different Bibles this year. But what I wound up doing is I took all the stuff, the tabs, the paper, everything out of the Bibles that I was in. And I put it all in here. So that even though there are chapters that aren't highlighted in here, I still studied them, but I studied them in other Bibles. So I transferred all my notes and things from those Bibles into here. So I still have pretty much the year's worth of study of the studying I've done in this Bible. I think I'm missing one chapter that I did. And... And oh, no, no, I, I, I transferred James over Hebrews. I didn't transfer Hebrews over to this one yet. So I need to transfer the notes that I have in Gloria, which is my, um, illustrated. Inspire faith, my inspire faith Bible. I named my Bible some weird, um, but I have some notes in Gloria that have to do with Hebrews. So even though some of those pages aren't colored, I still read them, just not in this Bible, but all the notes are in this Bible. So there will be a lot of blank pages, but even though it's blank, I've, I've read them. I've read them, and they're all highlighted in other Bibles, but all the notes are um, in here. That's what I have. Um, so, I love this Bible. But I'm excited to start. Um, I'm excited to start my new note-taking style, and, um, yeah. Oh, and I'm thinking, and I may have regret this. I may regret this. 
But I'm thinking of doing from Genesis to Revelations. That's a lot of Old Testament Testament at one time, I know. Um, but I will be reading like wherever I'm at and then a psalm. Well, that's an older New Testament. I'm going to cycle through the Psalms and maybe the Proverbs. So I think that's my new approach. So um, I need to find all. I did wonder. I did. I, I read through Genesis already last year. The end of last year. I need to. I want all those notes. Well, no, because I'm doing it different. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying, guys. Alright, that's it, you guys. It's only been 25 minutes. Have a good day. God bless you guys.